Hello, welcome to another video. Today we are going to be starting a seven part series and this is going to be a rainbow series. So we are going to start with red today and then I will be posting future videos going through all the colors of the rainbow. So I'm really excited. Um, doing a one color palette is pretty fun. So I think it will give you guys a lot of new ideas for your paintings and will just be kind of something new and fun that we can do. So this is actually a custom order and they requested that these be painted on a square surface. So I have these wood, they're like wood panel canvases that I got at Michael's and they are 10 inches. So each painting from the rainbow series will be painted on the 10 inch square surface. And I've already painted this one black using multi-surface satin and pure black by Folk Art. And we are gonna be mixing some custom colors. I can just show you real quickly what I have pulled. So I have the flash in red, so just a red metallic. Cherry red, cranberry wine, true red, and heritage brick. I may or may not use all of these. I am going to custom mix some colors. Um, and then glorious gold by Deco Art. And then I'll be using this palette. I will be using some brushes. I'll be using this set by US Art Supply. So almost all of these tools can be found in my Amazon shop. I will leave a link for that in the description of the video, or that can also be found by going to my website, which is thoughtfuldots.com, and then click on the tools I use tab, and that will take you directly to my Amazon shop where you can shop my most commonly used tools. I will also be using this nail stylus tool set. I will also leave a link in the description of this video for um, a photo of the size chart of my specific tools so that you can use that to convert to whatever set that you are using. And then I'll be using the dotting rods by Happy Dotting Company that conveniently have the millimeter size right on the handle so you guys can follow along if you have this set or use the millimeter size to convert to whatever rods you have. I am just adding this clip in after the fact because I forgot to mention that we will be using mirrors and I will just be using these diamond shaped mirrors and Gorilla Glue Super Glue Gel to glue them on. I will be using a 16 point mandala stencil. I will be using the Brassarth white charcoal pencil and a compass. Again, all these can be found in my Amazon shop. And we are just gonna quickly find the center of this board. So I'm just lining it up. I know this is 10 inches, so I'm just going to mark a halfway at five. And then I'm going to flip it the other way, do the same thing. Mark at five. I'm just going to do it one more time. Actually, I'll do it all the way. So I'm just going to pick one of these. I'm going to go for this one right here. And there are so many different ways to find the center, but I just like to kind of eyeball it. This angle is going to get a little weird with the camera being so close, but just putting this on the center. I'm going to pull it all the way up to the edge. Just dot, and then I'm going to flip it around, pull it out to the edge. So 
This needs to be moved up a little bit. We just want to make sure that it's hitting at the same point on each side. And then just adjust it a little bit. So I just pull it all the way to the edge. And just make sure it hits at the same point on each side. So that's pretty good. So I'm just going to mark that. And then we're going to draw our guide marks. And I do have a lazy Susan under here just to make it easier to spin. So I'm just putting that over the center that we made. And normally on a circle, it wouldn't really matter where the guide marks are, but since this is a square, I want to make sure that there's a vertical guide mark going this way and this way, just so that our mandala is lined up nicely on this square. Okay, so I'm just going to hold this down and I'm going to start drawing the vertical guide marks. Oops, just got off a little bit. Okay, I'm just going to sharpen this a bit. And I'm just grabbing a ruler and I'm going to be extending these guide marks because I want them to go all the way out to the edge. And feel free to, this is a 10 inch surface, so you could totally just if you don't want to do a square, just do it on a 10 inch circle. I need my larger ruler. Just like to blow off any residue and there are our vertical guide marks and then I am just gonna sharpen this real quick I did get an electric sharpener and if you guys have issues with your pencil crumbling with like the little handheld ones I definitely recommend trying an electric sharpener it's been so awesome I'm just going to pop this back over and I'm just going to do a 
one set of circular guide mark lines. And then I always forget, but these are about a centimeter, maybe a little bit bigger. But we are just going to do, we can do a little bit bigger than a centimeter. But if you don't have that stencil, then you can just measure out about one centimeter. It doesn't have to be exact. So we're just placing that over the center and then putting the pencil on that first line that we made. And we are just extending that circular guide mark out. And then we're gonna do the same. We're just gonna go put our pencil on each of these lines. So my um, compass came off the center a little bit, so I'm going to redo that one. One more time, just so it's a little bit darker than. And I can actually grab a Q-tip and just just so that I know which one is the right one. And that one goes right up to the edge, so that's perfect. So there are the guide marks. And now we can mix up our colors. So if I was doing anything above a 10 inch, I would use my paint pots with the lid. But 10 inch, I think will be fine with this. The problem is they just start to dry out after a little bit, but I don't think this one is big enough to the point where we need these. Plus I'm doing seven of these this week, so I don't want to use seven of these. I'd rather just reuse these. So we will just try it out. Um, okay, so my idea was, I honestly don't know if I wanna use this heritage brick. I think I'll do cranberry, cherry red, true red so i think i'll mix these two then do this one alone then this one and i also want to mix one with white to get a lighter shade so i'm going to start with this cranberry it's a new bottle so i need to open it so 
So I'm gonna do cranberry plus cherry red and then I just have this little mixing brush so that'll just give us kind of a deeper maroon color And then I want the cherry red on its own. And true red. And then I'm gonna do some true red with white. So I'm actually, let's see, I'm going to add some cherry red and see how that looks. So basically just dark to a little bit lighter. And I think that's all we need. We'll just do these four colors and the gold. Oh, and flesh. So I'm going to start with this one. Again, if you don't have the flash paint, then just use any other metallic or you can just use another shade of the red. I'm going to grab a dotting tool. I want to use probably the largest one in my set. If I can find it, I, can't, I don't know where I put it. Okay, well... right in front of me, <laughs> as usual. So I'm gonna use this 15 and a half. And to the metallic red. And especially for the center dot, I like to get a lot of paint on my tool. And I like to look underneath and make sure that it's pretty much like dripping. And then I'll dot and then just kind of hover. And then there's like a peak and it's just kind of bumpy. So I'm adding more paint. So I want a lot of paint like that. And then I'm gonna wipe this tool off. So there's this big mound and this paint is a little bit thicker. So you can leave it like that or I'm going to grab just a stylus tool and I'm going to spread it out and there's some little bubbles so I'm just popping them okay so we have our center dot And now we are going to start our ring of dots. And 
and I'm going to start with gold. Ooh. Actually, do I want to start with gold? No, no gold. I'm going to start with the lightest pinky color and the large end of the yellow stylus tool. And we are just going to start And as we get towards the end, I'm just kind of looking ahead to see about how many dots we can fit there. And I think I can fit two more. Okay, we have our first row of dots. I'm just wiping off my tool. So I'm gonna go up in size to the large end of the white tool and I'm just gonna go this way with the colors so I'm gonna go to the true red yes true red and we're gonna dot in between each dot from the first row Okay, and moving on to the next one, I'm gonna go up in size to the large end of the blue stylus tool. And I'm gonna go to the cherry red color. And I'm just doing the same thing. I'm going in between each dot from the previous row. Okay, and now we're going to do our last row. So I'm going up in size to the large end of the green tool. And I'm taking our darkest color. And again, just going in between each dot from the previous row.
Okay, so there we have our last row of dots. And once it was dry, I will go back and do some little micro dots in between, probably with gold. But now we're gonna move on to our next pattern. And I'm just kind of going on, going with the flow on this one. So not really sure exactly what we'll be doing. Let's see. So I'm just gonna start with this six and a half tool and I'm going to get, actually I might end up using this as like top dots. Well, I don't know. We'll start with the true red, the six and a half. And I'm gonna dot on every other vertical guide mark. So I did an all red piece recently, a large one. You might have seen it on social media. But that one I used more dark colors. So I, for this one, I wanted it to be a little bit more bright red. So I tried to choose some brighter tones. But I still added in that dark tone and that light tone just for a little bit of contrast. Okay, next I'm gonna grab the Glorious Gold. And the large end of the yellow stylus tool. And I'm just going to walk the dots. Okay, so now I'm just looking at how much space we have in between here and just trying to plan out in my head what kind of pattern we can fit here. We could do like one more set of walking the dots and maybe a brush stroke around, or we could do some like draggy swoosh patterns with the stylus tool. Um, let's think. We will just do some draggy swoosh patterns with the um, stylus. I'm just thinking. Okay, we will do the lighter color and I'm gonna use the large end of the blue stylus tool. And I'm just making a dot at the top of each of the petal patterns that we're making. And I'm just keeping them right on that vertical guide mark and that is how we will make sure that our pattern is all nice and symmetrical. And then I'll just flip this tool over and use the small end of the blue tool and just chipping off any paint that's on there. We're going to do some dot and drag swooshes with the stylus tool. So you could use a brush for these, but they would be thicker. 
And I'm gonna try to do one more swoosh pattern above this, so I want them to be more on the thin side. So that's why I'm gonna use the stylus instead, or instead of doing like a double swoosh pattern like I'm gonna do, you could just do this one pattern and use a brush and make it thicker and that will fill in that space. But we're just building our pattern around how much space we have. Basically like right in this area here, we just wanna make sure that it's filled in nicely so we don't have too many gaps. Okay, and now we're gonna do one more little swoosh pattern to kind of fill in that area. And I'm gonna use the same tool and we are going to get, let's do the cherry red. So this one here. And I'm going to do three dots kind of the tip of the last pattern that we did so I'm going on either side of that um, vertical guide mark so left right and then center So just remember that with any of these patterns I'm teaching, you can use the same pattern but change up the color palette completely if you'd like. So if you're not a fan of red, then you can just use this tutorial to do this pattern but just pick your own color palette. Okay. Just thinking of how thick I want the next ones to be, I might need a little bit of a larger tool. I'm gonna use the large end of the white stylus tool. And again, that um, cherry red. And we are just going to dot up here and then drag down along the last pink tone. And mine aren't touching because I don't want that paint to run together. So we're just getting up nice and close to it, but not actually touching. Sometimes I like to do these little dragging motions because that kind of has a long way to travel. So that dragging motion just drags more of that paint down until we get to that tip. And we're just creating this pretty little flower pattern. Okay, so now you can see the pretty flower pattern pattern starting to emerge. So now I'm just kind of thinking what we can do here. So I'm thinking maybe some swooshes just to finish off this little section and then we can start a new pattern. So I'm going to take the dark color. And you can see all these three dots, like the tip of this petal, all kind of end on this same circular guide mark. So that's where I'm gonna start the swoosh. I'm gonna start it underneath that guide mark, that circular one. That way we're setting ourselves up for the next part of the pattern. So I'm taking the large end of the green stylus tool and the darker, the darkest color, and I'm dotting right on that vertical guide mark. And then I'm going to drag this swoosh. I flipped my tool over. 
I'm using the small end and I'm gonna drag it all the way down. So dotting and then flipping the tool over and using the small end to drag that all the way down. I'm just cleaning out the small end of the green tool because there's a little bit of paint that was built up on it. And so my, dang, it's really on there. Um, when there's paint built up on the tool, then the swoosh sometimes isn't as pointed as I would like. So we want like a nice point at the end there. Okay, next I'm going to use the flash, so the metallic red. And I'm gonna use the same large end of the green tool and I'm gonna do the same thing we just did. Just in this gap here, I'm just making these ones slightly shorter. And then I'm gonna drag that paint down into that little gap. This paint has a little bit of a different consistency than deco art, so it's a little bit stickier. I just cannot get the paint buildup off of the end of the screen tool, so I might actually just use a different one to drag. It's about the same size. That tool isn't much better, so the green one's fine. I'm starting to think that the flash paint is a multi-surface paint because it really sticks on my tools if I don't clean them up all the way. It's not easy to get off, so I guess that's good if you're using it as like a multi-surface paint. But not good if you don't clean your tools properly like me. Okay, so now this pattern, everything is all lined up on this circular guide mark. So now we are ready to start the next portion of the pattern. And I'm just thinking. So I'm gonna take, let's see. So I'm taking the size seven dotting rod and we are gonna dot, you can either do on every swoosh or on top of every petal. I'm gonna do on top of every swoosh pattern. And what color do I want? I'm gonna do the cherry red. I'm gonna add a little more. Size seven. And we are just going to dot above every swoosh pattern and just um, placing our dot on that vertical guide mark to make sure our pattern stays nice and in line.
Next, I'm going to take, actually, I'm going to do the pink. I'm going to use the small end of the white tool. And just walking the dots around that large red dot that we just made. And we're just going to do this on every petal going all the way around. Okay, so now we're going to keep building out this petal. You could do the same petal pattern that we did here or just walk the dots. I'm trying to decide if I want to walk more dots or do this little pattern that we did here. So I'm just kind of eyeballing the spacing here. So I am also going to be doing brush strokes. So I'm just kind of trying to plan out in my head um, how to fill this spacing in here. So I'm actually going to use gold next, and we're going to do a little bit different this time. Um, I'm actually, I'm going to use the large end of the blue stylus and use the gold. And I'm going to do three dots on top of those little petals that we're making. So I'm going left, right, center, right on that vertical guide mark. Left, right, center. And I just do that tapping motion. If I need to unload more paint, it will make the dot bigger. I'm going to use a brush for the next part. So I just need to figure out which one. This one looks fine. US Art Supply 5 over 0. So just like a shorter bristle. Thin brush. I'm just getting it saturated with water in my water cup. And then I will wipe it off. So now I'm going to take the gold. And instead of using the stylus tool like we did before, we're going to do the same thing, but with a brush, we're just pressing down and then just lighten up on the pressure towards the tip. You could do this with a stylus tool if you feel more comfortable. The brush just gives more of a rounded smooth shape, which I like. Okay, now I'm just going to switch to the two over zero. It's a little bit longer of a bristle and thicker than the one we just used. 
So we're gonna be doing some longer, thicker brush strokes. I'm just getting this one wet. You just wanna make sure that it's fully saturated. Sometimes if the brush is dry still, it'll be a little stiff when you start to paint. So you just wanna make sure it's fully saturated. I'm going to use the True Red. And we are going to start our brush strokes on this guide mark here, circular guide mark. And then they're all gonna end about on that same guide mark too. So just pushing down so that it's thicker at the base. And then we are gonna do one more brush stroke, so just make sure you're leaving enough space in between. And we are just gonna do this for each petal. I'm going to do some little dots at the tip of our petal and I'm going to use the pink color and I'm actually going to use the large end of the white stylus tool and I'm just going to dot at the tip and then walk downward. And we're just gonna do that on each flower petal. Okay, so now we're gonna take the same brush if I can find mine, so the two over zero. I'm just getting it wet again. And I'm gonna take the darkest color. And I'm going to do another brush stroke. going around and ending on the same guide mark. And also there's this petal and this petal and there's a vertical guide mark going through the center. So if you can try to keep your last brush stroke on either side of that vertical guide mark, then that is how you should know whether you have enough space for two brush strokes. So I'm trying to keep this one on the left side of that brush stroke or guide mark, this guide mark. And I like to get them close to one another right here without touching. I like to leave a little gap. I don't like my petals touching. I feel like it can start to look a little sloppy if they're touching there. Next, we are going to add a little space for some mirrors. I'm gonna be using these diamond shaped ones. This does not come like this. I bought this little case empty from Michael's and then filled it with my mirrors that I got from Amazon. Those are also in my Amazon shop. So I'm just gonna grab one
trying to figure out where I want to place it. My guide marks were a little bit off, so it's kind of hard. So I'm gonna place the tip on, so there's this guide mark where our petal ends, then there's this one above it. I'm gonna start the tip of the mirror on the guide mark above our petal. And we are basically just going to outline it with a pencil and then um, once the piece dries, we will varnish and then we'll glue on the mirrors after we varnish. So I'm just taking this pencil and I'm just outlining the mirror. If you don't have mirror pieces, you can draw a diamond shape with a brush. So just use paint to draw a diamond shape. And it will give you the same pattern that we're doing. Okay, and then I'm also just trying to think how far out I want this pattern to come. Because basically we want whatever pattern we do, we want to make sure it comes all the way out to the edge. So I'm just trying to think ahead of what I want to do here. But sometimes we just have to go for it and try to figure it out later. I'm going to grab the gold and I'm going to grab the large end of the blue stylus tool. And I'm going to dot above the top of the um, diamond shape and then I'm going to walk the dots down along the diamond shape. So we're just kind of outlining the mirror. And we are just going to do that for each diamond shape. That paint had a big chunk in it. I'm just going to grab a Q-tip. Twist it up. And we will do that again. All right, now we're gonna do some brush strokes. And I will probably use that same brush, the two over zero. And when I do these, I'm gonna be doing brush strokes down. I like to kind of count, let's see. One, two, three, maybe about four. And then I like to look at the colors. So this brush stroke ended with the darkest one. So for contrast, I want our last brush stroke to be our lightest one. So I'm gonna start with the dark and go one, two, three, four, and that should be perfect. It should fit perfect. If not, we can always add gold or something, but we will start with our darkest. We might need to make some more of that. 
but I think it's okay for right now. And I'm going to start our brush strokes on this guide mark here. So we want them all to start at the same place. We're basically just outlining the gold dots that we made. Okay, I'm gonna use the same brush and now we're gonna go to the cherry red. And we are just going to make these slightly shorter. And it's not really as thick as I would like. Let's see. Sometimes you can just add more paint to the brush and it will make it thicker, which that did work. So these are just slightly shorter. So that brush was okay. It just was making the swooshes a little bit thinner than I wanted. So I'm going to go up in size. I'm going to use my longer bristle brush. This is the size one rigor brush by US Art Supply. Again, I just wanna make sure it's fully saturated. We are gonna be going to the true red. I'm gonna pour some more. I want these nice and thick and they again are gonna be just slightly shorter. It does get a little awkward with um, like hand placement when you start to get towards the outer edge. When doing brush strokes, you really need somewhere to rest your wrist. So I push mine up more towards the top and that gives me like some place to rest my wrist. Okay, next we're gonna do the lighter pinkish color. So I'm just going to make some more of that. And 
and I'm gonna use that same brush. Oh, we've got paint all over. Messy, messy. Okay, so these are gonna be slightly shorter and they're gonna be our last brush strokes. So we really wanna make sure we're filling in that space nicely. So the way that you can fill in that space nicely on the last one is again, there's this vertical guide mark going through this pattern and this pattern. And you just wanna make sure that brush stroke comes all the way up to the guide mark. So now there's kind of like an awkward amount of spacing till we get to the edge. So we just have to figure out how to build this out. But I'm going to do some swooshes here. I should have think what color gold will look good. Um, I know it's a lot of pink, I kind of like it, but later once this dries, you could go over and do some top brush strokes in a different color just to like tone it down a little bit. But I kind of like it. Okay, I'm gonna do gold swooshes. So I'm using the large end of the green stylus tool. I want these nice and plump, so I'm using a lot of paint. Again, I got paint on this small end. So we're just gonna drag these down. So I'm just using the same size again, just making them slightly shorter and then dragging down, and that's how we're gonna fill in that little space there. And these ended on this circular guide mark, and the swooshes are ending on that circular guide mark as well. And that's how we make sure everything's nice and lined up. Okay, so now we just need to figure out, I think I'll do like a little four dot pattern here and then maybe, well, let's see, let's see. I think I'm gonna do a pattern right here, maybe like a little lotus, just on the four corners. I think that will look cool. I've never like worked with squares, maybe like one other time, but not really, usually it's circles. So 
we will just test out some new things. I have seven of these to do, so we can just kind of play. So I'm using the size eight rod and I'm gonna use the flash metallic. And I'm just gonna dot right above the petals that are in the corners. So the four corners And I'm going to grab the gold, the large end of the yellow stylus tool. And we're just going to walk the dots around each red dot that we just made. Next, I'm going to use the large end of the white tool and we will do pink. Just kind of pushing some of that paint towards the center. And again, we're just going to walk the dots. All right, I'm gonna pour a little bit more of this cherry red, and I'm gonna use the large end of the green stylus tool to make a large dot just at the tip of each of those petals. And then I'm going to use the large end of the white stylus tool. And we are just going to walk the dots down.
All right, I'm going to take the two over zero brush and I'm gonna pour some more dark. So cranberry wine and cherry red. And I'm just going to mix that up. And I'm going to do a brush stroke. Starting at the base. Oops. And it does get a little tricky using the Lazy Susan when you get towards the very outer edge. So I'm just gonna move that up. Rinsing the brush off. And let's see here. I'm going to get some more true red. And I want these to be nice and thick, so I think I'm going to go up in size and brush to the one rigger, which is the long bristle. Um, I'm just trying to think of what color I want here. I might actually do the pink first. Which I need to make more of. So, cherry red and white. This is the lightest color in our palette, so we just have to place it strategically because wherever we place it, it's really gonna pop. Okay, so for these ones, I'm going to be starting like a little bit above and doing like that kind of shape down. So curving, starting up higher, like right next to each other, and then curving down. So we're getting kind of that cute little shape these longer bristle brushes are nice for these
Okay. Next, we are going to go for the True Red. And these ones are going to start lower. So about here. And we're just kind of following that same pattern. So starting like upward and then just giving it that, that nice little curve. We just want to make sure that the brush strokes are getting shorter each time. Oops, just flicked a little red paint right there. So I'm just grabbing a Q-tip. So I'm not gonna go back and fix that pink right now. I'm gonna wait for it to dry. It's much easier to fix when it's dry. Actually, I don't know if that's true in this case because it's such a, such a small piece right there. I might be able just to grab like a small brush and just fill in that one little spot. It looks okay. It's hard to fix the brush strokes because you want to like swoop the whole thing to give it a nice cohesive look, but that we would have to wait for it to dry. Okay, just rinsing off the brush. I'm gonna do a couple more brush strokes here. So we're going from light to dark now. So now we're gonna do the cherry red. I'm gonna go over to this one. And again, we want these ones to be shorter. So now I'm just kind of curving them in more of like that comma shape. So these ones don't have a curve at the top like the other ones. They're just starting down lower. Not quite as thick as I want it, so I'm gonna get more paint. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do is one more dark, maybe a dark and a gold. I don't know, we'll see. We'll do one more dark. Shorter.
And yeah, I'll do one more gold just to make it really pop. So my gold paint is just a little bit chunky for some reason. So I'm actually bringing these last ones out a little bit wider, almost to the edge there. So I actually wasn't planning to have this pattern follow a square shape. I was just going to have just the regular circle mandala, but it evolved and I like it. Okay. So now right here, we could actually do some dots there which might be kind of cool I think we'll do that and I think I will use red I don't know that'll be a stretch for me but let's try it I've never really done this so So there's just this, these two guide marks right here. So I'm just going right in between them, the two circular guide marks. And I just picked a tool, sorry, this is size eight that would fit in that space there. I think that looks pretty cool. It's different. That's what I love about this painting and just going with the flow is this is not how I pictured this ending up, but I actually really like it and it's different from what I normally do. So it's kind of fun. It's kind of an awkward space right there, so I'm going to squeeze one in and try to squeeze in two right here. Perfect. Okay, I really like that. Um, I'm just going to add a couple more details in here. Let's see. I'm going to use the large end of the white tool. And I'm going to walk some dots in here, some gold dots. So I'm starting at the three dots and moving outward. I'm just going to fill in that little gap that's there, that black gap. Oh, 
okay so we've just kind of filled in that area and then I do just want to add some little micro dots in there it is kind of hard because I'm doing it at the end here and the paint's still wet so usually it's easier um, if we do it before we get to the outer edge but For the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going for it. But you can definitely wait for the paint to dry before doing these. I'm just resting my wrist on the outer portion of the wood so I have a place to rest. Okay, so there we have our little micro dots in the center. And now, let's see here. Oh, I actually wanna do some micro dots out here. I'm gonna use a larger tool. I want them to be a little bit bigger. I'm gonna use the large end of the white tool. And I'm doing some just larger dots, just right in between those red dots. And we will do this all the way around. Just kind of brings that pattern together. Okay, this is looking way different than I expected, but I love it so much. Okay, so we're just going to do some top dots and then we are almost done. So I'm just thinking of what color I want the top dots to be. I kind of want to brighten up that center a little bit, so I'm going to use the pink. And then you just want to use a tool that is a size smaller than... The dots, let me just find my smaller tools. Oh, this will be fine, I think. Too big, I can't find, oh, here we go. So I'm gonna use the four and a half dotting rod and the pink, and this will just kind of brighten up the center a bit. And then for these ones, I'm gonna go up in size a little bit. We'll just flip it over and use the five. And I'm gonna use the flash, the metallic. And then for the last ones, I'm gonna do gold. And then let's think here. You could like fill in this space with some walking the dots. I'm trying to decide if I want to or if I think it's fine. 
I'm gonna put just like a little gold dot using a larger tool. I'm gonna to use the large end of the green. I'm just gonna put a dot up here. We actually could do it even bigger. I'm gonna grab a dotting rod. I'm gonna use the size five dotting rod and actually just make a bigger dot. Maybe just one more to bring it all the way out to the edge. Yeah, I was totally not planning on making this a square shape. It just kind of, I was just gonna do a regular circle and then leave the edges black, but it just kind of evolved and I like it. Once that pink dries, I wanna do one more just gold top dot on there. But other than that, I think we're good. So I think it's too wet to do it now. Let me see. You don't want a top dot on wet paint, but for the sake of this video, yay, I love it. I love how it just took on a life of its own. Okay, so we are going to let this dry. I don't think I'm going to do any top brush strokes. Maybe I'm going to let this dry just for a bit and kind of think about it and then we'll come back. But once it's fully dry, we will varnish and then we'll add the mirrors. So I'm going to leave this for a couple hours and I'll see you in a sec. Okay, so this is dried for a bit. <clears throat> Excuse me. So now I'm just going to go in and add some more detail. All of this is totally optional. Um, but I just kind of like showing you guys the process that I go through. So right here, we have a lot of the darker color. So I just kind of want to lighten it up a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do some top brush strokes. So I'm just going to grab a brush. I'm going to grab a smaller brush. This is five over zero. Just getting it wet. And I'm taking the flash. And for top brush strokes, I'm going to be doing this one here. We don't want to cover the whole thing. We just want to go right through the center. And as you can see, that just really brightens up if you compare it to that one. That just one little brush stroke really brightens up that corner, which is what I wanted. So sometimes if I'm using those darker colors, um, like especially like purples tend to dry really dark. So if they end up drying darker than you anticipated, then top brush strokes are always a nice way to um, brighten up some of those darker areas. And then I'm also, I was thinking of like doing top brush strokes over the pink. I think I might just do one and see how it looks. I'm just gonna hold it up so I can see it. Honestly, we could do it either way. I'm going to do them just because I want to make sure that this piece is really representative of the color red. I want pink as an accent, but I don't want it to be too overpowering. So I'm just going right through the center so that the pink is still showing through. Oh, 
we still want the pink. We just want to see less of it. That is perfect. That did exactly what I wanted it to do. And then let's see. I was also thinking of doing that same thing on the gold, but again, I'm not totally sure. So I think I'll just test one. It just feels like a lot of gold and I wanna, again, make sure that we have majority red. So yeah, I mean, again, optional. It will look good either way. I just want some more red. Okay, so I'm thinking that's all we need for the top brush strokes. And then let me just think this through real quick. I wanna do some top dots. I was either gonna do red or gold, but again, I think, I think we have enough gold. So I think I'll just do red and I'm just gonna be going on top of these ones using this metallic. And that will just add one more layer of detail. So we're just gonna do this on every red dot all the way around. And you can see just comparing that side to that side, it just adds another like little pop. All right, um, I'm just gonna do one more top dot on that red using the gold. And I'm just gonna use a teeny tiny dotting tool. So two and a half dotting rod. Just gonna do a little dot in the center. All right, so that is pretty much done. I'm gonna let this dry again. Then we will be ready to erase guide marks and varnish. Okay, this is dry now. So I'm going to be taking the Pampers Wet Wipe. And I'm just going to start gently removing the guide marks. I like to do these little circular motions just to get like in those little nooks and crannies. Okay, now we have all of our guide marks removed. So now I'm going to take this outside and apply the varnish. I will not be recording this process, so I will just show you the varnish that I'll be using, Krylon Crystal Clear, and I'll use probably one or two coats, but it just sprays on really easily. Let it dry, it dries quickly, so less than five minutes, and then I can do a second coat. And then we will come back and apply the mirrors and then we are finished. Okay, this is now varnished. So we are just going to glue on our mirrors. So I'll just grab out a couple here. And 
I'm using the Gorilla Super Glue Gel. And you just need the tiniest amount. So we're just putting them right in that blank diamond area that we outlined. Okay, I'm going to let these just dry for a minute and then I'm going to wipe them off with a cloth just to clean all the finger smudges off of them. And then we are done and I will be showing you the final result outside hopefully in the natural light. All right, so here is the final result. That was a ton of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like this video, share it, and subscribe to my channel if you don't already. And be sure to keep an eye out for future videos in this seven part series. Next, we will be doing orange, which I'm really excited about. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and we will see you on the next one.